This is Trucker's Corner with Trucker Glenn. Well, I ask an old truck driver about life out on the road. If he does a lot of singing when he's bringing in his load. If there's a pretty waitress crying for him every hundred miles. If he gets a lot of loving, if he has a lot of smiles. And I ask him if those trucking songs tell about a life like his. He said, if you want to know the truth about it, here's the way it is. All I do is drive, 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 try to stay alive and keep my mind on my load, keep my eye upon the road. I got nothing in common with any man who's home every day at five. All I do is drive, 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 drive. Yes, to all the professional drivers out there, we salute you. I am Rigoche with Trucker Glenn. Welcome to this edition of Trucker's Corner. Glenn, how are you, my friend? I am great. And uh, we're not just going to salute the truck drivers, professional truck drivers out there, but also anybody who makes a living driving, whether it's a taxi, a bus, uh, you know, all those Ubers and, and whatnot, everybody who is a professional driver. That's right. And the reason why we wanted to do this, why? Why did we want to do this? Well, you know, you hear all kinds of bad stuff on the media, and and everybody's always mad at the driver, and, you know, and you don't very often get a good report on a driver. Like, even if the, the guy has gone out of his way to help somebody, and you don't hear any of that stuff mm. anymore. And I thought, you know what, it's so nice to get a compliment and so nice to say, hey, buddy, you're doing a great job and, and uh, we really appreciate it. And I know that, that I love to hear that when I was out there. It was always nice to say, man, you handled that truck really good or you did a great job or whatever. And and uh, so that's why. I've, I've had that happen maybe a few times since I've been driving where someone has said, you know, I appreciate what you do. Um, maybe a couple times I heard during the times of COVID, thank you so much for what you do for bringing us our groceries. And actually, and maybe it's more than a few. I've also received a number of emails of people just showing their appreciation. And, and you're right, it's nice. It's almost like a veteran hearing those words, thank you for your service. So it's, it, it is really, really nice. And you're right, it's not, we're not hearing that enough out there. Yeah, and, and COVID, I really noticed it. Like you say, during COVID, it was all over the news. They did interviews with drivers, and they in, did interviews uh, with the man on the street. And um, it was all very, very positive. And, uh, you know, it just uh, COVID showed the public just what the drivers are made out of. Now, these guys are going hard and heavy and I know there was a lot of rules broke because they uh, you know they had to do what they had to do to get the, the load through uh, a lot of times they had to drop down through the US to get up to some place in Canada mm. and um, they had to put their load into bond yeah yeah that's right and and uh, you I know, remember because I did a few of them <laughs> yeah and I was just I was kind of proud of the boys out there because there wasn't any complaining. They they had a job to do and they did it. And I was like I said, I was so proud of everybody, and and I thought you know it would be nice if they had a National Truckers Day or something mm, like that. And great idea. And, uh, yeah, and uh, just um, you know have a truck show type of thing and and um, you know have employers you know give awards to their drivers or whatever, but. I know when I was working for a couple of companies, I got a, a, a maybe two or three awards during my my uh, career, mm. and I was so proud of those things. And I put them up in my in this room here that I'm broadcasting from, and uh, a lot of people looked at it and they'd go, "Wow," you know, and it was it made me feel good. Well, you know what? <laughs> it's kind of funny that you say that. I remember the days, you know, the company where I met you. And that was at you know Challenger, and that was a good experience for me. And I remember the very first year of being there. It's the only company that's ever done this, 
where they would have like a trucker day and they'd have a barbecue. And, um, and they had it at their different terminals. I don't think uh, Transex ever did something like that. They might have, but you know what? You don't hear of that anymore. Maybe there are I, companies I'm, in the U.S. that do it, but certainly you don't hear about it in Canada. When's the last time you heard about that? I don't know. I I, I was a little disappointed in the Challenger one because I always got a burnt wiener. <laughs> I don't know if they saw me coming and thought, here, let's give him that one. <laughs> yeah, that's the one that fell on the you're ground. Right. But you're right. Challenger did a lot for the boys. They and, did. And he, he was a great guy to work for. A- indeed. And, um, you know, unfortunately... Um, a lot of drivers are, are taken for granted. I mean, when you're down in the U.S., I mean, I personally see this all the time. Uh, driving through California, driving through Washington and Oregon, and, and some states are more friendlier than others. Um, just the four-wheelers just flipping you the bird and cutting you off. And they, you know, they just don't realize this is a guy that's heading down the road he's probably driven maybe 11 hours he's tired he's away from his family he's um probably hungry he doesn't really know if he's going to get a parking spot at the next truck stop there is the stress there and you know it can be very lonely out there and uh, especially when you've got someone out there that's getting angry with you on the road just because they want to get to burger king before you can get to your stop and unfortunately um you just see it. You really do. And, and, and it shows in a lot of the drivers that we're seeing out there. Would you not agree that um, a lot of drivers, they're just not taking this industry serious anymore because they're not being treated like professionals. Would you not agree? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's so different from when I started out there. I, I would I would have um, some people buy me dinner hmm. uh, because uh, I let them through a snowstorm. They just followed the truck or through a fog, really bad fog. Yeah. And, they were so grateful. They they bought me dinner. I had that happen a couple of times, but um, you know the public doesn't realize too the responsibility that that goes along with this. Everybody says, "Oh yeah, you drive a truck," but you might have a, a, a you know sometimes you'll get those tricky loads where you got to really slow down for the corners or you got to really slow down for the hills uh, going down them. That is, hmm. and. Um, sometimes it takes a lot of work and you go through a lot of stress to get these loads through you know everybody's on your butt I think we talked about that last time and uh, you know get the load there and and do it legal type thing and you know a lot of times it's just uh, I, I think that driving is one of the biggest stress uh, orientated jobs that there there is right now would you not agree that I guess Maybe other people out there should, you know, watch something or documentary or, or anything just to see exactly what the driver goes through every day. I'd like to see the average person drive 11 hours and see how many naps they're going to require. It is a, it is a skill. It really is. You have to train yeah. your body to be out there and drive. I remember the first time I started driving. It was... Uh, Five, four, and four and a half, five hours, and I needed a nap. It, it, it was crazy. I'd, I'm like, yeah. how do people adjust to this? But you know what, you do. But it is very, very, you know, it is very stressful on the body, on the brain, on the mind, on the mm-hmm. family. And uh, unfortunately, that's why we're doing this video. A lot of drivers just aren't appreciated out there, and we yeah. we just want to acknowledge them. And you know, as drivers, we want to acknowledge you for the things that you're doing as well. Yeah. I, I had a friend of mine phone just after watching. First time she'd ever seen the show uh, Highway Through Hell. Hmm. And it just so happens that there was a lot of wrecks that particular uh, episode. And she said, how much of that is, is made up? Is, <laughs> is You know, they make it like Hollywood. And I said, absolutely none of it. She said, I had absolutely no idea what you guys went through in the wintertime, especially going up all those mountain passes. And she said, man, I have more respect for you guys now. And hmm. Well, she said, for me. But um, she said uh, she couldn't believe what she was watching. And I said, well, that's exactly how it happens. And they don't doctor it up. That's the way it is. And uh, there's probably a lot of people that don't know what we go through. They, they see the chrome <coughs> and, the, uh, you know, the, the, the twin stacks and the air horn and the jake brake. And they think it's really cool. But... <laughs> it's a lot more than that. 
Definitely. I mean, just think about the different seasons we go through, right? We go through ridiculous heat conditions in the summertime, um, especially down south, Arizona, California. And there are times when these good old trucks like to shut down the air conditioning unit. And now you're driving in ridiculous heat of 115 Fahrenheit. And you got the Mexican air conditioning going. The windows are rolled down. And that ain't really helping the situation. So ridiculous amounts of heat. You got to try to sleep in that. You've got all these noisy trucks at truck stops you got to attend to. And then, of course, we move into winter, winter where now everyone's freezing and you're dealing with freezing conditions and everything. It is a real challenge, make, which makes me wonder why. Why did you get out of it, man? I thought you just loved all that craziness. <laughs> oh, I did. I, I, I loved all of it. But seriously, mm. I, I did love it. You can't be in it for 51 years yeah, and not love it. That's right. But, um, y- yeah, it's... I don't know any other profession that's like this, Ray. I mean, even a brain surgeon, he, he'll he have a week's worth of sleep before he goes in to, to do an operation. I asked one guy one time, I said, how about if your company called you up and said, okay, we need you in to, to do some paperwork, but it's going to take you four days, and you can't go home and sleep, and you can't really go out to eat, so bring something along to eat, and that little closet, that's where you'll sleep in. Hmm. Uh, I wonder how many people would do that. Yeah. They'd look at him like he, <clears throat> their boss, like he was zoned out or no they wouldn't do it <clears throat> now we also want to make clear too we're, we're talking to the professional out there and we're saluting the professional that really does take their job serious that dresses appropriately acts appropriately that does their job drives professionally out on the road when you are driving that truck down the road you're not just holding a steering wheel well a lot of guys do but you're not the real professional is not only looking straight ahead, he's looking at every single mirror every four to seven seconds. He's looking everywhere. Yeah. Like he's, it's, it is it is hard on the brain having to deal with that. And you're doing that for what? In Can- at least in the U.S., 11 straight hours in Canada, you're doing it for 13 hours. And then you go further north, I think you can go 15. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, think about those guys that drive up there. My goodness. I mean. And, and not only that, Ray, you know, lots of times there's trouble at home. Or, or, you know, maybe sickness, sicknesses. Your kids are sick, or whatever. Or the, yeah, they're missing their families, and yeah, and it's it's <clears> that's <throat> when it gets tough. So, a lot of times, I'd be uh, sitting alone in a in a truck stop. Of course, I don't want to talk to anybody. I just want to eat my meal and drink my coffee and get going. And there's always a straggler that comes in that you can tell, boy, they need a friend really bad. Yeah. So, uh, I would talk to them, and you know. Yeah. We'd have a few laughs, and you could tell he felt better. But uh, yeah, you know. can, can you imagine how many relationships, like marriages, were seriously affected by this industry? I mean, I, I know several people, just offhand, that are struggling with their marriages right now, just because they're away from home. Yeah, and um, that's really stressful. It's really hard on the on the driver, especially when he's. He needs his mind focused when he's out there on the road, especially when you're hauling around 80,000 pounds with you. And it doesn't take much to make a mistake, especially if you drive through like Seattle or something and the lanes are so narrow. I mean, you're constantly watching each side to see who's going to, you know, who's going to sideswipe you. It, it, it can be very stressful. So yeah. it is, it is, I think it's the toughest job out there. I really do. Well, I, uh, most of the drivers that I uh, grew, grew up with, they were working on their second and third marriage because it just and, and you can't blame the women the guys are never home and when they are home they're the boss of course that doesn't work but um yeah it's it's uh i i had a, a mini mental breakdown when i was on the road because there was so much stuff going on at home i remember coming into or just leaving portland and the last bridge that you go across to get into vancouver washington mm-hmm the drawbridge. I looked at it and I thought, there is no way this truck's going to fit under this bridge. <laughs> yeah, it's like... And I was clipping along pretty good, so I locked it up solid and came to a screech and cars are going all <coughs> over the place. And, uh, of course, I realized that I could get underneath it. But I <laughs> was went that really, the drawbridge? Really yeah, the drawbridge. Yeah, it's there, very yeah. deceiving looking, isn't it? Yeah. 
So anyways, I mean, it's things like that. You, you got to be clear headed. You got to look after your problems. I would suggest to drivers, if, if something really bad is going on at home, um, you know, take a break, you know, get you, it resolved. You know what? A great segue to what you just said there is something that you mentioned last time. I think we mentioned it last time. How important it is to pick that right company that's going to understand yeah. if you need to be home. Like, say, I have a friend who goes out probably a month at a time, but when he goes home, he goes home for like at least 10 days to yeah. spend with his family. And I don't know how well that's working for him, but... Um, is that really enough? Like, you I know, don't think so. No. no, I don't think so. So, I mean, picking a company that's going to be, a, you know, understanding. Well, yeah, you, sure, you can go off and do that or whatever, especially if you live out of town. Yeah. Um, or either that or, I mean, there's a reason why I'm single. I, I, I was in a relationship before and it wasn't fair. I just didn't feel it was fair to her for me yeah. to be out on the road when I knew she wanted somebody around. So I sacrificed that. I gave that up. And it's kind of sad, um, but um, unless the Lord brings somebody my way that is willing to be up with me on the road, I think that's the only way that it ever would work. I mean, yeah. especially at the age I'm at now, I'm not going to meet someone who's got children. They're going to be grown up, and they're certainly not going to want to sit at home waiting for me to show up. They're going to want to go, right? Yeah. So, I mean, you mentioned in previous videos that when you and Shirley went out on the road together, you guys had a really good time. We did. We only had three fights. Of course, they were all her fault. <laughs> They've got, yeah. And uh, we were talking about this the other day. Is she going to be watching that, this, Glenn? Uh, probably. Mm. But she disagrees with probably me, but that's won't, okay. So there won't be another Trucker's Corner next week when Shirley sees <laughs> yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's, um, you know, the guys work, I guess the bottom line is that guys work so hard out there. And I know I've, I've worked till I've just about <laughs> fell down and cried because a lot of stuff is so unfair out there oh. and you know what i think more people like us or you might get somebody in the safety department of some of these things i think they realize <clears throat> that and like i said a, a good word goes a long mm. long way you know i always tell um people who um are looking for a ministry like people in your church I had a guy one time, so he, he was 105 years old probably, and he's, I said, how are you doing? He said, well, I'm just sitting here waiting for the Lord to give me a ministry. And I said, well, have I got a good one for you? <laughs> Phone a driver. Adopt a driver. Hmm. And I'd love to see this happen where people uh, pick, they, just about everybody knows a driver. Uh, phone them once a week or twice a week or when they're in town, invite them out for dinner or or buy a little present for them or do whatever just something to show your appreciation for for all that they do out there and i'll tell you what it makes a difference you, you know what it's really sad that it takes a pandemic for that to happen because during covid that did happen to me one time i was in where was i i think it was in calgary at the truck stop there the one on the uh, south end there was a lady that was going throughout the parking lot with her little daughter and she was handing out little bags of cookies to all the drivers to show her appreciation oh. and she had a little card i still have it that said thank you for what you do and that really touched my heart especially when that little yep. girl gave me that bag of cookies i gave her a hug and i said thank you so much and i let her blow the horn <laughs> so oh. yeah yeah it well was, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll tell you one time i was really feeling bad getting depressed and because i was out there for over three weeks at the time <laughs> And I thought, how come nobody, I, I, during one of my prayers, and I said, Lord, how come nobody ever calls me? You know, I make the effort to call everybody, make sure I stay in touch, blah, blah. You do the same thing, probably. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't two minutes later, and the phone rang, and it was one of my friends. And I was so glad to get that phone call. And, of course, we took, talked about, you know, everything from soup to nuts, but... I, I guess we talked for about a half an hour, and when that phone call was finished, man, I could have drove for another 10 hours. I mm. felt so good. Yeah. At, uh, so anybody listening out there who's not a driver, um, adopt one. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, maybe we you can put something on your uh, website, that uh, a link to where drivers can put their name in there and say, hey, I'd like to be adopted. 
Well, they can even get as much as, uh, uh, you know, they can get involved with local truck stops in their area. Yeah, that's true. Right? Yeah. And they can do that. Yeah. Um, you see that throughout the U.S. and some places in Canada where they'll have a little chapel. And mm-hmm. um, those are nice, but most of the time they're vacant. There isn't even a, there isn't yeah. even a chaplain there. So that's yeah. kind of sad. One thing I wanted to mention, there, uh, Glenn, before we, before we wrap it up. Just so people could recognize and, and acknowledge that it's not just driving out there that is stressful on the driver, but just the, and I know you're going to, you have a lot to say about this, the amount of waiting that we do when we're mm. out there at the shippers, the receivers, sitting in a border lineup. Um, for days. For days we can be doing, yeah. and, I'm, and we don't get, and a lot of the time we don't even get paid for that. No, and um, that is incredibly stressful having to deal with that, especially if you have an appointment to be home for your daughter's birthday, and then right. you are held up, and now all your all your <clears throat> plans go to the wayside. Yeah, I mean the yeah. waiting. I don't know what the waiting was like when you were driving. Probably not much different, but it's nothing's changed. In in the early days, you got paid for everything. Yeah, got paid for meals, that's, waiting. That's the difference, but. But later on, you and you're just expected to do it. I, I went for a job interview one time, and the guy, this is way back when, he said, you're going to make 50 cents a mile. Now, that was pretty good money. I said, okay, how much sitting is involved? Because you can offer me $10 a mile, but if I'm going to be sitting for three quarters of the month or the week or whatever, that boils down to maybe 50, uh, you know, like <coughs> minimal amount of money by the time you figure it all out because you're, you know, you're still there. You're still with your truck, and mm. you know. But I, I don't know why. I, I guess because the margin is is so skinny in this industry that uh, you know they they need to do everything they can do to make a buck. I guess. But so I would say that everybody, every one of you that is viewing, even the non-drivers, everybody knows a truck driver. Everybody knows a truck driver, and if you don't yeah. know one, well, like I said before interact with the truck stop and do something but let a driver know that you appreciate what they do Mm -hmm. that goes such a long way i remember what it did for me and and um it just makes me think wow you know people are appreciating we're doing what we're doing here yeah because uh i can't even imagine just in the last two three years how much food i brought up from the u.s into canada you could probably fill an entire warehouse it's just an insane amount and that's yeah. just me and i can only imagine how much food you brought to wherever you were going or from the u.s or i don't know if you're predominantly in canada I, you did drive the u.s quite a bit too didn't oh, you? oh yeah yeah. Uh, yeah yeah well um yeah so yeah reach out to a driver let them know you care yeah. let them know that you appreciate them and um mm-hmm. um did you we want to get to an email that you received uh, but did you have anything you want to wrap up with that I just like my hat goes off to you boys because yeah. I know what you're going through. And good on you guys and um, keep it professional. Keep, keep it professional. Keep it professional and keep on trucking because hopefully things will change in the future. Yeah. Yeah, I had an email from um, a fellow by the name of Walter Peterson. Hmm. And hey, Walter. See. Yay. And it says, uh, "Hello, Glenn. I hope you're well." been watching Trucker's Corner with you and Ray just to let you know that I watch as often as I can and I love the show. I always wanted to be a truck driver myself but unable to get my CDL due to losing both of my legs. But I just wanted to say hello to you and wish you all the best. And that's from, I don't know, oh yes I do, Walter Peterson from Newfoundland, Canada. Wow, Newfoundland. Newfoundland. Hmm. So, yeah, so glad to hear from you, uh, uh, Walter. And, and when I answered the letter, I said, if there's anything we can put on the show that you would want to hear, yeah, uh, by all means, let us know, and, and we'd be more than happy to do that for you. But uh, thank you so much for, for taking the time to write in, Walter. Yeah, thank you, Walter. And if anybody else would like to send Trucker Glenn an email for a future show, whether it's on the videos here or on the podcast, you can send it to truckerglen 10 That's the number 10 at gmail.com. truckerglen 10 at gmail.com. Well, my friend, 
Always a pleasure. And uh, it's been fun. Yeah. Again, we salute you, all professional drivers yes. out there. Be safe out there, please. And thank you yes. for what you do. Thank you. Thank you.